Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Pig Health Today, and with me is Dr. Jennifer Wishney. She is an assistant professor at Cal Poly and also a consultant at Wishney Consulting in California. Nice to have you here. Well, thank you for having me. Now, you've been taking a look at the attitudes toward antibiotic-free production, but not so much consumer attitudes, but attitudes among pork producers and veterinarians in particular. What are you finding? Well, you know, it was an interesting survey. So like you said, this was a, a look at the opinions and experience of veterinarians and producers actually across commodities, but I'm going to talk specifically about swine because that's my area of expertise, um, on their, their experience and opinions of raising swine without the use of antibiotics. So this, I think, was probably one of the first surveys that has looked at the veterinarian and producer perspective. And we, we had a lot of, of interesting outcomes. We looked at... Um, diseases, disease challenges between the two systems, as well as health and welfare challenges. And there we saw similarities between the systems. You know, the, the diseases that were challenges in raised without antibiotics production were similar to those that were in the, um, what we, we termed as conventional production for those that were and using How many people were in the study altogether? We had um, 148 uh, completed responses for the swine portion of it, and just over 500 and something for the total survey across the commodities, which included turkey, um, poultry, beef, and dairy, and swine. And then we also looked at um, impacts on production, so different production parameters and how raising swine without the use of antibiotics would impact that. And so we saw um, that respondents, both from the, those that had experience with RWA production and those that were in conventional production, and what their opinions were would be if they switched to RWA production. And I'm using RWA to mean raised without antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that there was some negative impacts on production parameters like a decrease in feed efficiency, an increase in mortality. And this an is what they thought morbidity. was going to happen? Um, or was it based on their own experience? Yeah, so both. For the, the what we call the RWA group, it was based on their experience or their past experience. For the conventional group, it was based on um, their responses were grouped as to what they thought would be the impacts. And we saw between the two groups similar what they thought and what they experienced mm -hmm. to be the same on the production parameters. Uh, we also looked at um, uh, not only the production parameters, but some of their opinions on if we presented them with the question, how would raising swine without antibiotics impact food safety? Do you think that it would significantly worsen to significantly improve food safety? And um, interestingly, across the commodities and between the groups, the RWA respondents with experience um, in this type of production and the conventional respondents, their opinion, they all felt that food safety and a similar question, animal health and welfare, would be significantly worsened or slightly worsened or have no impact on food safety. So a, a shift to believing that, that understanding, experiencing, or believing that this would negatively impact food safety as well as the health and welfare of the animals. And, and that's really interesting because the, the food industry, so much of it is driven by consumer perception, right. not always science. So when you look at most consumers, if they're saying, well, we don't want antibiotics, but we also want animal welfare. Mm -hmm. We want safe food, but we don't want antibiotics. Th they don't seem to be going hand in hand. Right, and that was uh, actually as part of uh, the next question we asked. So we asked what their experience or opinion was based on that. Um, we asked, what do you think your customer believes? So what do you think your retailer or your grocer believes? We didn't ask the grocers or retailers or customers specifically, customers being the companies, not the consumers. Um, but we asked what the producers and vets thought, and the shift there was that they thought that their customers believed that food safety and health and welfare would be significantly improved or slightly improved based on raising animals without antibiotics. Wow. So a pretty, a pretty substantial difference in what they believe or experience versus what they think their customer that they're selling to um, believe. So that was that was pretty enlightening for us to see that in the survey. And, and I think, um, you know, raises the question, w what do the customers <laughs> actually believe? And is that sort of the next step to, to look into that and better understand that piece? Well, and it's interesting because um, veterinarians are really medical doctors or people of science. Um, they, and, and then producers, of course, have a good track record for 
wanting to um, have a high standards for welfare, uh, not just because it's the right thing to do, but because pigs that are happy and comfortable perform better. So it, it's a win-win situation. Um, why do you think then that some of these producers are open to raising sure. pigs without antibiotics yeah. if, if they're aware of the, these downsides? And I think a lot of that, we, we did actually ask a question surrounding that as well. Um, what were the factors contributing to your decision to raise animals without antibiotics or to not raise animals without antibiotics? And what we observed in the, the factors contributing to the decision or the reasons for raising animals without antibiotics were all primarily market driven. So, you know, they, they a better sales price, they got a, a piece of the market that they weren't able to get otherwise, like okay. a niche sort of production. So surrounding sales driven reasons and for those reasons for not raising animals um, or pigs without the use of antibiotics were primarily concerns for health and welfare of the animals or that they were in a program they felt comfortable already had responsible antibiotic use. So where are we going with this? Well, good question. Um, you know, one of the other, the other questions in it was in the survey that was, was I, th I think somewhat concerning for us was that we asked if there was ever a time when the due to the pressures to maintain the label, compromised animal health and welfare in slightly different words. And we saw, you know, variable responses to, I disagree with this statement, it was given as a statement to, I agree with this statement, but the fact that there was any sort of agreement that there was, were times that possibly health and welfare would be compromised to maintain a label, I think, was, was concerning for us and, and an observation that was sort of a key observation in this study. So in terms of you know, next steps, I think, um, number one, understanding what the consumers actually think, because um, we asked what they thought their customers thought, or what the consumers, I'm sorry, not the consumers, what the customers actually think in terms of that, and, and what, although a lot of the industry has done educational outreach to customers pretty significantly on why and how we use antibiotics for animal health and welfare and human health, um, how we might need to to approach that in a different way if that isn't the message that's getting through. Um, and I also think just better understanding, you know, if you're raising animals without antibiotics, what are the factors that are needed for this to be sustainable for the producer in terms of production, but also ensure the animal health and welfare. So those, those things all together, which is, you know, probably a, a bit of a challenge in terms of cost and demand and, and how you put all that together. Yeah. And of course, eliminating antibiotics or even making significant reductions, I mean, that's a pretty arbitrary process. Is it necessarily the same as responsible antibiotic use or <laughs> is there a difference? No, I think that's a, that is a great question because um, no, you know, and that is the concern, eliminating antibiotics. What, what does that actually mean? How is it impacting animal health and welfare? And as we see from this survey, the opinions and experience that it does impact animal health and welfare and potentially food safety, which is the opposite of sort of where we're trying to go yeah. with, with protecting human health. So no, I think responsible antibiotic use is how do you use antibiotics responsibly in a manner where you are protecting the health and welfare of the animals and you're cognizant of how you're using them so you're minimizing the potential for resistance to develop. I think that that's part of responsible use and what you've probably heard the, the term stewardship and, yes. and how we use antibiotics. And you know, in the pork industry, I think we're pretty fortunate because we have the Pork Quality Assurance Program that's you know, a very long standing program and has a good piece in it about um, judicious or responsible use of antibiotics. And the producers in the pork industry are, are, are pretty, um, I would say from my past experience, uh, you know, well versed in this and how to do it responsibly, but something you know, I think as an industry, veterinarians and producers and everyone involved is always, we want to be very cognizant of it and how do we continually improve this and make sure we're using antibiotics responsibly. Yeah, and from a practical standpoint, they cost money. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah, Did for that sure. come up in your survey at it, all? It didn't, we didn't ask about the, well, I in a slightly different way, we asked about the cost of production and yes, the respondents agreed that the cost of production was increased when you're raising animals without antibiotics. So that's, that's even a little bit different. 
So what are the takeaway messages for the pork industry? Well, I think the takeaway messages for the pork industry from this particular study are um, understanding that, yes, there may be some impacts on the animal health and the animal welfare of raising animals without antibiotics, and there may be some pressures from the demands to maintain a label. And I think um, better understanding what the consumers are actually thinking and are they understanding that these pressures may exist because the ultimate for the producers and veterinarians is we want to maintain the health and welfare of the animals. That's you know, our, our ethical obligation and also to protect human health at the same time.